Trine University dropped a tough one uh, on the road this week. You guys had a 14 to three lead at halftime and they scored 20 unanswered points in the second half. What happened in that second half? Well, we defensively, we'll start out there. Uh, we really shut them down in the first half. Uh, once we got used to the speed of their, of their offensive skill players and, and of their offensive attack, really settled down, forced a field goal, and then uh, shut them down for the rest of the half. So at halftime, we really didn't have a lot of adjustments to make. They came out, made a lot of changes in the third quarter, went down, scored, and then uh, uh, we fumbled the next possession on the 15. They scored again, played pretty well until the end defensively. Offensively, started out on fire, uh, hit a long pass. Uh, uh, Kyron Pearson, uh, first, first uh, long, long catch of his career, hopefully of many more. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, played very, very well in the red zone. And uh, things were looking good. And uh, offensively in the second half, uh, we just, had missed a sign, just little things here and there, and it was never the same guy each play. It was a different guy that took turns. I mean, we've had outstanding snaps of the quarterback for four years, mm -hmm. and we had two bad snaps, and, but that was only two. That was only, you know, other than that, uh, you know, Tristan played absolutely amazing. Uh, so just little things here and there. Um, some new guys uh, saw time at, at quarterback. Uh, some new guys saw time at, on, on offense, defense, special teams. Uh, so, you know, it, 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 was a, it was a heartfelt loss, but um, our guys really have come back focused for this week. Let's talk about the quarterback position with Brandon out. Uh, you had uh, Brent Hayes, a senior, and then you had Alex Price, a freshman, kind of sharing time during the game. Mm -hmm. How did you evaluate their performance and, and what's the plan going into this week? Um, I, I thought they, they both played their hearts out. Mm -hmm. I thought they both made some, some metal errors that are correctable. And uh, we look forward to seeing growth from both of them as we go forward. And how's Brandon doing? Uh, Brandon is still out this week, but hasn't been able to practice yet. Today is a possibility, but it's really tough to play a quarterback that's only practiced one day. Another week, another MIAA player of the week that we get to face. They're good players in this conference. And, and this week, it's Noah McMinn. Uh, he was a workhorse last 30 carries the kid had, over 230 yards. Um, when you start to turn your attention to Olivet, is it the running game that you have to focus on the most? Well, they, they do things uh, offensively. They're, they're very, very um, complex in what they do. Uh, they have a very, very solid running game, and it all starts with that. And then they like to boot off of that, throw some play action stuff, a lot of shallow cross passes, things of that nature that uh, can give you fits if you don't have a lot of time to prepare for it. Uh, defensively to combat, uh, they're that you know, multiple pronged attack. Uh, we've got to play with tremendous discipline and effort, and we've got to be physical when it comes down to it. They're, they're a very large team. They have big offensive linemen, big defensive linemen, uh, you know, 300 pound type guys, uh, especially on their uh, offensive line. They're 320, 330, and uh, they move decently. Um, so we've got to make sure that, that we use great technique you know, we're not that big, so we have to use great technique and we have to use our speed, which I feel like we have a lot of. I was at a little bit of practice last night um, over at Zollner Stadium. And uh, when I got over there, you guys had the music going. I heard a lot of enthusiasm, guys hooping and hollering and supporting each other. The, the vibe uh, from somebody just looking at practice is that there's a ton of enthusiasm and excitement in this program. Lost a couple of games, but uh, the guys still love being out there preparing, and, and that has to, as a coach, that's got to be what you're looking for, right? Absolutely. And, and you know, it, when it all comes down to it, I mean, we've got a, a proven formula for success. I mean, I was lucky to be here under Coach Land when I took over. We didn't change a lot in the way we prepare and the way we practice. And, you know, that's proved to win five out of the last 11 conference championships and, and a whole lot of games. And when it comes down to it, if you can practice with enthusiasm and you have that spark, uh, you're going to continue to get better. You, you were fortunate you were there on Wednesday. Tuesday, we were a little lethargic, but, but you know, as coaches, we put a huge emphasis into, into increasing our enthusiasm level uh, and our effort level on Wednesday. And, and last night was one of the best practices that we've had in a long time. Windy, rainy. <laughs> it was, oh, it was awful. It, it was, was a nice uh, sound, I can yeah, tell you. Yeah, it was low, low 40s. Uh, 
we, we couldn't even have the filmers up on the lifts. Uh, the filmers had to be in, in the press box uh, because it was so awful. Uh, we didn't want to put them in, in any danger right. being up on the lift or anything like that. But, um, you know, the kids overcame that, and that's what it's going to take the rest of the way out. We don't know what the weather is going to be like going forward. We can look at the, the five-day forecast, but, you know, Tuesday we were planning on practicing in the evening because there was uh, 80% chance of thunderstorms. And then, so we moved back practice and it didn't even rain. You know, so. I saw on Twitter this week, you know, last name for Coach Abs, uh, you put up a tweet of your son playing middle school football. Yeah. yeah. And I have a son who's a freshman and a son who's a junior and they both play football. And I get to coach the JV football team. And I just tell the kids a lot about how proud I am for accepting the challenge to play football, to be part of a team, because it's a hard sport. Um, there is a lot of sacrifice that goes into being a football player. And it's exciting to see young kids like yours, and I'm proud of mine, uh, that still, even today, with all of the obstacles, and we hear so much about concussions and every reason why you shouldn't play the sport, it's great to see kids still taking on that challenge. We want them to be safe. We want them to do it the correct way. But football, I think, still has a lot to offer young men. And I know you believe that. Yes. And it's good to see that that's still continuing. Oh, no question. There's no better team sport, and uh, there's no sport that teaches sacrifice better than the game of football and putting others first uh, than the game of football, especially when you talk about the lineman positions and and uh, the less uh, glorified positions. And I am the proud son, or the proud husband, or the, the proud. Hu I'm a proud husband, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a very proud father yeah. of my son. He played offensive line. Uh, this year, and they had a, a special group of kids at Maple Creek Middle School, and uh, um, they, they came away with a championship. And I was able to catch some of the games and, and a lot of the others on on uh, on film. But uh, it's uh, it's really neat when you see, you know, your your son mm -hmm. playing the game that you love and, and coach, and and uh, had the opportunity to play. Thank you to Coach Abs. It's Trine uh, taking on Olivet this week, one o'clock, and we'll have it for you on the Trine Broadcasting Network.